everyone. Welcome to Inside Iraq from the U.S. Capitol. I'm Jasim Azawi. On November 4th, Americans will go to the polls to vote for a new president. The recent financial meltdown may mean the economy is what Americans are most concerned about, but Iraq remains a key issue on Election Day. In this episode, we will examine the positions of the two presidential candidates in the run-up to the war. What did they say about the U.S. troop surge? And looking ahead, how might either one, as president, extricate America from the costly and divisive occupation of Iraq? Al Jazeera correspondent Josh Rushings lays out the two presidential candidates' policies on Iraq. Five years after the invasion of Iraq and a year after the U.S. surged troops into the occupation, battle lines are being redrawn and blurred by the murky fog of war. Only this time it's the presidential candidates' positions on the occupation, surge, and pullout that seem to shift like the sands of Iraq. We hadn't even finished Afghanistan where he said, next up, Baghdad. He will still will not admit that he was wrong about the strategy of the surge in Iraq. It is time to bring this war in Iraq to a close. Barack Obama says he wants most of the troops out in 16 months, while John McCain says he wants to keep them there as long as they're needed, which might be until the end of 2011 or even beyond. To get away from the bombastic, if not confusing, campaign rhetoric, we decided to seek clarity at the United States Institute of Peace in Washington, D.C., a bipartisan group funded by U.S. Congress. There seems to be a conventional wisdom that Obama's anti-war and that McCain is all war. But what will actually be different in Iraq in the future, depending on who's elected? I think the press uh, is anxious to tease out what the real differences are. How they focus much more on the timetable questions. I think there are differences between them, but I don't think there are uh, such dramatic differences on these issues right now in this political context. In 2007, security in Iraq was so bad that the U.S. sent 40,000 additional troops. Obama was one of the surge's most vocal critics, and McCain was one of his most ardent supporters. One year later, McCain says sectarian and ethnic violence were reduced by 90 percent. And that's the same kind of strategy of go out and secure and hold and allow people to live normal lives. But Obama says that the surge failed to achieve its stated purpose of encouraging political reconciliation. Obama says the heart of the battle is not even Iraq, but Afghanistan. Obama puts much more emphasis on Afghanistan as an important front in the war on terror. Obama is essentially saying, we need him out of Iraq and we need him for Afghanistan. McCain says the central front in the war on terror is in Iraq. And there, there's an important difference, I think, between Obama and McCain. No matter who's elected, the U.S. will likely draw down in Iraq and return troops to Afghanistan. The question is how soon and over what timeline. But the biggest challenge for the next president may be spinning this reposturing as a winning effort. To discuss the war on Iraq, the surge, and future U.S.-Iraq relations, I'm delighted to welcome here in the studio Larry Cobb, former Assistant Secretary of Defense and senior fellow at the Center for American Progress, and John Nagel, a senior fellow at the Center for a New American Security. Gentlemen, Welcome to Inside Iraq. John, if I may start with you, Senator McCain supported this war, and at the time it was pushed by senior generals as well as Donald Rumsfeld as a quick war. This is going to be a cakewalk. Can you see why his critics would hold him liable, at least partially, for supporting such a war because of his ideological stance? There were a number of people, of course, who, who were incorrect uh, about the nature and the course of the war in Iraq. The, um, At the same time, there were many, many people that were on the right the, side. There were, there were also some who were right. It was an enormously divisive time in American society. The aftermath of September 11th was, was immediate and, and, and uh, very tangible. And um, it, it's a, an enormously difficult decision about whether to go to war and, and under what circumstances, and in particular, um, I, I believe the responsibility of decision makers to 
if they make that decision to put all of the necessary resources behind that. And, and regardless of whether you make the decision to invade Iraq or not in 2003, I, I think we can all agree that the implementation of that decision was not very well The done. implementation of that war, the mismanagement of that war has become amply clear, but yet there is a measure of responsibility for those who supported the president with the U.S. Senate vote. I, I think that that is absolutely true, and that is why we uh, elect the, the most talented people in the country and, and expect to hold them accountable for their decisions. And there were a number of people, the majority of the U.S. Senate, who um, supported the decision to go to war in Iraq because they believed that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction, was a clear and present danger to the United States. At the time, Senator Obama was not in the Senate, so perhaps he could say, you know, I didn't play a part of it. And he objected to the war even when he was outside. He thought it was a dumb war. but. Can you see why people object to the fact that he thinks most of the people who supported this war, they were motiv motivated by political reasoning or by political uh, interest? Well, <clears throat> I think a lot of people, particularly the Democrats, were afraid to be seen as soft on defense, and so they went along with it because many Democrats had voted against the first Persian uh, Gulf, Gulf War. You had many Republicans who wanted to support the, the party in power. But, you know, the great irony is if you, the senators who read the whole national intelligence estimate, see, because Senator Bob Graham from Florida, who was then the chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, said, well, before we go to war, let's have a national intelligence estimate to see, you know, what, what the case is. The administration released publicly just a summary which indicated that the weight of evidence was that there were weapons of mass destruction and ties to al-Qaeda. But according to Senator Graham, who read the whole national intelligence estimate, there really was no, no case. And the other thing was that a lot of people voted, now whether they are being honest or not, saying that, well, we gave him permission so we could get the inspectors back in, but we assumed that before uh, he would go to war, he would come back to us or get a second U.N. resolution, because it was clear by March of 2003 that the inspectors hadn't been able to find anything. I think there's also a logical flaw in, in some of this thinking. That is, the assumption was that September 11th truly changed everything, that deterrence no longer worked. And in fact, we know we have 50 years of history with the Soviet Union that you can, in fact, deter a state that, that possesses weapons of mass destruction. So I think none of us really thought that problem through all the way through. And, and there are real questions in, in the thinking of the administration and of those who supported the war. If he on failed that on the eve of the war, did he succeed, John McCain, that is, on the surge? That the only reason right now he is a presidential candidate, he might be in the White House in the next two, three weeks because of his support for the surge. But the surge, according to General Petraeus, that it is reversible. It, this could be all ephemeral within a, a year or two. The, the surge was an enormous gamble. So uh, I fought in Iraq in 2003, 2004, and saw a war that was clearly going downhill, a war that we clearly were not winning. The situation actually got worse after I left Iraq. And, and clearly by the summer of 2006, uh, the United States strategy was in tatters. The decision to impose a new strategy to create a, a proper counterinsurgency strategy that focused first on protecting the Iraqi people, that uh, agreed to negotiate with the, the Sunni tribes and what became the Awakening, the Sons of Iraq program. That was an enormous gamble. A at the time, I, I thought what it does had... It show? Does it show clairvoyancy, prophetic understanding of the situation, or was he just a sidekick for the president? It was uh, an, an enormously difficult and gut-wrenching decision for those who were But involved. was it based upon understanding? I, I can't say. Larry? Well, I think what, what two things. John is quite right, and the country, he, deserve, he deserves a lot of credit for what he and his colleagues did there. He said the war was going bad in 2004. That's not what General Petraeus told us. He wrote an op-ed right before the 2004 election, said it was going uh, wonderfully. 2005, he got people to go on television and say, hey, we would be able, you know, things were going so well, we could draw down by the end of, uh, of, two, of 2006. So we had a lot of that, so it's no wonder people were wondering what was going on, who could we trust. But the surge means many things. Yes, you did add 30,000 more troops. You did change the strategy. General Casey tried to change the strategy, but they wouldn't let him. You know, because Maliki did not want, uh, Prime Minister Maliki wanted to have the Iraqis uh, do it. You also got very lucky after the 2006 election 
we were a even before the surge, we were able to make the deal with the Sunni insurgents in Al-Anbar Is that province. the case, Larry Corb? Is that really the case? Let me read you two quotes by Obama, and, you, and then I'll ask you to comment. Sure. I'll try to make them as short as possible. In January 2007, this is what Obama said. I don't know any expert on the region or any military officer that I have spoken to privately that believes that the deployment of more troops to Iraq is going to make a substantial difference on the situation on the ground. 2007. A year later, this is what he says. Now, I had no doubt, and I said at the time, when I opposed the surge, that given how wonderfully our troops perform, I, it, if we place 30,000 more troops in there, then it would be an improvement in the security situation. Well, I, again, basically, the, the purpose of the surge, remember, was to get the Iraqis to make political reconciliation. Prime Minister Maliki and President Bush said before the surge, by the end of 2007, they would have to take over security in all of the provinces. They only had half, half by then. So when you talk about it, you're saying, okay, if we add 30,000 more troops, will the Iraqis have meaningful political reconciliation? Well, we did, and they still don't have meaningful power. So I think that you have to ask yourself, you don't use military power in a vacuum. You use it for a particular purpose. The purpose was to get the Iraqis to reconcile. The Iraqis pretend to reconcile. Let me stop you here for just a second. John Nagel, the very purpose of that surge was national reconciliation. So far, that has not happened. It has not happened fully. There, there has been some reconciliation, obviously. The Sunnis decided begin The daily killing we see in Baghdad and other provinces and the bombing going everywhere, that's his national reconciliation? The, it is still horrific and atrocious and horrible and, and, and a, a, a humanitarian tragedy almost daily. But it is far less of a tragedy than it was. So the, the, uh, the, the way the, the decisions to invade Iraq and to occupy Iraq were implemented were a disaster. But in 2007, General Petraeus implemented a new strategy with additional resources that dramatically reduced the level of violence. He helped to bring along this, the Sunni awakening, and the Sunnis decided to become a part of the government. And right now, al Maliki is cracking against the Sunni, uh, Sunni awakening council he is, members. And I'm, and I'm very concerned about that. But we are in a far better position than we were two years ago. We are not yet where we need to be, but I believe we are moving toward an Iraq that, that has the chance to become a normal Middle Eastern country. Thank you. We'll take a short break now. When we come back, we are going to discuss the major difference between Senator Obama and Senator McCain. Stay with us. Senator Obama was wrong about Iraq and the surge, and in his short career, he does not understand our national security challenges. We don't have time for on-the-job training, my friend.